Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Adam Stein. I'll be your host today for our webinar. Today, we're going to talk about the three ways that SIP botnets impact profitability. And there's actually quite a few ways that uh, our presenter is going to talk about today. A little bit of housekeeping. Uh, if you have any questions during today's session, feel free to uh, ping me on the side. And uh, we are going to post this to our ongoing uh, YouTube channel and to the new redshiftnetworks.com website as well, where you find a lot more information about fraud and analytics and unified communication threat management. So with that, I'll pass it over to our presenter, Amitabha Mukherjee. And Amitabha, do you want to start taking us through the presentation? And when you're ready to go to the next slide, you can just say next, and I'll, I'll keep following. Hello, everyone. This is Amitabha Mukherjee, the CEO and co-founder of Redshift um, Networks. Wonderful to talk to everyone. Sorry, there's a little background noise here. We're um, traveling a little bit, but um, did want to do this webinar. Um, so, uh, if you could go to the next slide, we're going to talk about the three ways SIP botnets impact profitability, and um, we're going to talk a little bit about how botnets are and what's happening in sort of on a broader scale around the world. Um, so, basically, the telecom industry, which is a $2 trillion industry, is migrating to an environment where it's completely IP-based. So, um, that means in, in no longer TDM or 3G or uh, 2G or TDM or analog lines or SS7 lines, they're all moving to a purely IP network. Um, and with that, of course, there's a migration to SIP, which basically essentially makes cable operators, fixed line operators, mobile operators, and all enterprises all going towards the standard protocol, which is basically a uh, session issue protocol of just SIP. And you can get these VoIP attacks or voice attacks that come in from all these different environments, whether they be from the internet or they be from other carriers or other areas. So that's the really interesting thing um, is that there's this massive migration to 5G, which is going to be a $500 billion spend. And security, of course, is a huge issue. So um, it's you know $2 trillion of loss in security across the world. So very interesting numbers. And so you need very strong security as you migrate in these networks. Right? Go to the next slide, Adam. Um, so basically what we're seeing as far as uh, attacks, um, you know, if you look at the carrier network, you have multiple networks there. You have the trunking network, uh, which is number one on your left-hand side, which is basically the peering partners of carriers, uh, partner partner communications. Um, then you have um, on the middle top there, the Volte mobile network. So you can have attacks coming in from your mobile handsets. Um, then on the right top, you have the voice over Wi-Fi soft clients. You can have attacks coming from the soft clients. At the bottom left, you'll have the cable operators. You can have attacks coming in from the cable modems. And on the right, uh, on the left bottom and the right bottom, you can have attacks coming from the enterprise customers or from residential customers to the carrier network. So the attacks are vectors, attack vectors are varied. Um, there are any egress and ingress points in and out of the network. And that's where we aim to protect those parts pieces. Right? Go ahead, Adam, the next slide, please. Um, some programs that have been inserted into servers um, without the knowledge of the owner of those servers. So whether they be data centers, whether they be computer systems and others, uh, even now botnets are getting implemented on IoT devices. So they're getting hijacked, and that's where the attacks are coming from. The botnets uh, inflicted about $100 billion losses in the global economy. It's a very big problem. Uh, most of the botnets are data-oriented, so um, they have a lot of IoT devices that are now being botnets. And by the way, your smartphone is also a IoT device. Um, many of the types of botnets, um, the most famous ones are like Quantifiker. Um, 2008, they infected about 15 million PCs, and um, they were generated from three to four million machines to infect those 15 million PCs. So it's sort of, all these machines were hijacked. Mirai, which is in 2016, infected 600,000 machines. Again, those were printers that were infected. And then Methbot, which was in 2016, uh, infected devices that made folks uh, see video ads for 300 million times per day. So very huge number for customers. So um, these are some of the botnets, the well-known botnets that have been out there and that have caused a lot of harm. But a $100 billion problem is from those botnets. Um, if you go to the next slide, now, looking at the three ways that SIP botnets impact probability, so some of the main areas of causes are, you know, they can actually shut down your carrier network or they can shut down a network 
It can be a sustained TDoS attack, a telephony denial of service attack, and that can shut down pretty much the network. They can also do a lot of scans on the network. So for days, for months, for years, they will scan the network until they're able to breach the network, whether they be an enterprise or a carrier customer. And the third way that they actually impact harm is they steal the data. So in other words, they steal financial data, they steal financial private customer information, um, and once they breach the network, and so they can cause harm to you, they can cause financial harm to you and other things. So those are sort of three main ways that they can get into your network and do harm to your network. Go to the next slide. So then SIP botnets during the different times, and just to give an example of some of the, um, the revenue losses. So telecom fraud is a $29 billion problem um, in 2017, and that's a huge problem. A lot of these attacks now are based on botnets, so they're attacking all these telecom networks. Um, TDoS attacks um, just in the, is, is now the second top attack vector. Not only in gaming, it constitutes about 6% of all attacks. Uh, robocalls they're attacking that's a 350 million dollar losses in u.s companies just alone in robocalls uh suspicious scans which is a, a well-known scanner there's a more of a million dollar per incident of these uh, suspicious scans um, based on the at t lawsuit um the remediation of these attacks you know costs almost fifty thousand per attack so it's very interesting and the record volume of garbage traffic uh, which records more than a terabyte of data um, using thumbs, things things like memcache, which is another um, botnet. The number of attacks and targets rose significantly um, along with duration. The longest attack you know, lasted 297 hours, so that's almost 12 days. And now, a lot of the um, new areas, because the smartphone is an IoT device, you know, now you have you know, IoT devices that can take down U.S. public emergency response systems. So we've seen a lot of attacks on 911 call centers from these botnets, right? Okay, next slide. So if you look at sort of the anatomy of the, of the attack, so what they typically do is they'll scan your network. And once they scan your network through these suspicious or service scanners, um, they'll do discovery enumeration, so they'll figure out, you know, who the number of calling numbers are, what the passwords are. And afterwards, they'll start doing more aggressive denial of service attacks. So they'll use a lot of these tools that are on the left-hand side called SIPP, Seagull, SIP, SAC, SIPNES, and those are used to generate different types of attack vectors on these networks. The third one down at the bottom is like fuzzing attacks, so they'll do a protocol anomaly to enter into the network. So those are sort of the phases of a botnet attack. They'll first scan your network, they'll start doing more aggressive attacks, and then they'll try and bring down your network. Go to the next slide, please. So this is, again, a snapshot of some of the attacks we're seeing in different carriers. So depending on the type of carrier, whether it be the mobile carrier, fixed line carrier, an enterprise voice carrier, or a cable operator, we're seeing you know, either a huge uptick of user calling new country, if you look at the right side, or policy violations, depending on the carrier type. So they actually know what type of carrier you are and what elements you have in your network to then generate the appropriate level of attacks, right? So very interesting attack vector. Can you go to the next slide, Adam? So where are these attacks coming from? So what we've seen is a lot of these botnets currently are, they're hijacking hosting services. Uh, not necessarily PCs at this moment, um, even though we do see some, they're actually hijacking um, hosting services. And there are hosting services in Germany, in the US, in France, in Holland, um, even the Google Cloud hosting service and others in the UK um, and in, in Germany also, as I mentioned. So they're hijacking these hosting services. They'll either hijack the network for an hour or two hours, or they'll actually buy time in those hosting services to then install their software and they'll just attack these botnets. So they're coming from well-known services or hosting services or peering services that we know around the world. Right. Go to the next slide, please. And so if you look at this particular graph, what it shows you, so of 35 plus customers that we have, um, these, this slide shows in the last five minutes, um, what are the top countries attacking those networks, those 35 networks? And you can see that are attacks coming from the US, a lot from Mexico, a lot from Puerto Rico, then Canada, and subsequently France, etc. So those are the, in the last five minutes, at least this is um, dated the 24th of May. 
and you can see some of the attack vectors out there. Next slide. And again here, now you see a pie representation of those attacks um, of those carriers, of those countries. So you can see the US, Mexico, Puerto Rico, Canada in more of a pie representation. Go to the next slide. So in this slide, what we're seeing is the targets from all over the world. And these were targeting um, specific, a different set of customers that are rich of customers. Um, in this particular snapshot, you're seeing a lot of attacks coming from France, a lot from Holland, uh, some minor pieces from Russia, some from Canada and Germany, a lot from US, and a lot of US, a lot of countries you don't think of sometimes, but on the right hand side, you can see where are these um, attacks coming from, right? Go to the next slide. Um, and then who are the attacking customers? So on, the, on this one, it shows you where the attacks are coming from. As you can see, level three is a well-known yeah. um, interchange carrier which is now part of CenturyLink, of course, but you can see a lot of attacks coming from the Level 3 network hitting all these carriers. So you're seeing attacks coming in from Liberty, Global, Liberty of Puerto Rico, WorldNet, um, AT&T Services, Online SaaS, the ones in Germany and France, Free SaaS in France. So a really interesting amount of data of where these attacks are coming from and um, specifically what ISPs they're coming from. Go to the next slide, please. Again, here um, you have uh, who are the top, you know, customers that are who are, who are the top attackers, but more in a pie representation. Um, again, you know, Open Open Best, which is a carrier in Mexico, Level Three, Open Mobile, um, Free SaaS, which we know to be an aggressive attacker. So again, it's a pie representation of some of these attacks and where they're coming from. Right. Next slide. So in this case, what we're trying to do is in in this sense of time. So basically. If you look in a per second basis in, in, in sort of a four second or five second window, you can see where these attacks came from in these 35 carriers. So you've seen attacks coming. And if you look at the first instance of time in, um, in the fourth second, you see attacks coming from Walrack, from Level 3, from Open Mobile, or Purpose. And then if you go to the right, you'll see these attacks. So you'll see there's some consistent attacks coming from the same attackers continuously in the intervals of time. Right? We go to the next slide, please. In this particular slide, we try to show what are the increases of SIP botnets every month in multiple carriers. So we see an average of around 400 to 450 new attack vectors that a carrier has. So very interesting. Um, that means that every month, there's typically either an uptick or a downtick of attack vectors. We're seeing that you know seasonality is really an issue here. Um, you know, summers, things slow down. In the months, you know, October, September, things are pretty well high. March is pretty high. So we're seeing those kind of trends that we probably see in business cycles, which is even more interesting, right? So, an interesting analogy. Next slide, if you go to. Um, this actually talks about attacks from a specific botnet, which is a cable carry in, in Austria. And what they've done, they've actually hijacked the, a node at the cable carrier and they're attacking these networks. So they're actually joining these attacks from Vienna, from Austria, hijack that particular server in that killer carrier and attacking carriers around the world. Go to the next slide. In this particular case, you'll see an, aut an autopy of cyber attack. So this is again a three week uh, time frame of the attack. You can see how these are generated by a lot of SIP um, botnet um, from rogue machines around the world. They're trying to hack the credentials. They're trying to get valid usernames, valid endpoints, valid dial plans, and other things that are sort of valid information, right? And you can see the timeline, if you go to the towards the right, of these attack vectors and what type of attacks they're generating. So very interesting within a three-week window of time. Next slide. And again, in this particular one, again, another three weeks, but you need a lot of threat intelligence analytics um, to, do, to detect these attacks. Um, they're not normal part of the traditional traffic, they consume unnecessary bandwidth, and of course they lead to things like fraud, like caller ID spoofing, legitimate redirections, etc., etc. So these are the type of attacks that you see out there. And next slide, please. This particular slide, you know, what we see is over 10 major carriers. Um, again, what are the global attacks that are coming in and where they're coming in from to those 10 major carriers. So as you can see, 
discounts of 400,000, you know, 200,000. So very large scale attacks um, in that you know, time frame. So we're talking about million, 2 million, 3 million attacks in that 90 day period, right? Next slide, please. In this particular slide, what you see is within a 72 hour window, uh, they're targeting one specific bad IP. And as you can see, there are multiple different types of attacks, right? So the different colors represent different customers of Redshift. Um, this is just a snapshot. And the different um, types of alerts are the horizontal bar. Um, and you can see these different types of attack from that bad IP address. You go to the next slide, you see the same thing, but within a 16 hour window um, of these bad IP addresses, right? Go to the next slide. Um, you'll see, you know, minute by minute of frequency. We're showing you all this data so you really can see how aggressive these attack vectors are. And they're very, not sort of, um, you know, uh, they're not very um, standard in their attack vectors. They vary, just like anything, they vary in their attack vectors, the way they're attacking, how they're attacking. And this particular one, in time of day, they're attacking at different times and different number of attacks that are being generated. Next slide, please. In this particular slide, again, uh, an attack on one carrier specifically every 30 minutes, and you can see sort of, you know, 60, 80 botnets, 100 botnets that are targeting that particular carrier. Next slide. Um, what you're seeing is like multiple carriers. So the ones in blue, the circles are the carriers, and you can see the dots represent who's attacking them. So in the middle one, you'll see um, all these red dots attacking that particular carrier. You go to the next slide. Um, in this slide, what you'll see is that this particular one carrier has multiple nodes. And in each of those nodes, he's getting attacked from these different botnets. So the graphical representation of all these botnets and where they're attacking, how they're attacking these different nodes. Sometimes they attack the same node. In this particular one, next slide, you'll actually see a much more aggressive representation of many, many botnets attacking these five nodes of this particular carrier. And the next slide is basically, again, you'll see um, once two carriers in the, in the center and what the spatial representation of those attacks are. Sometimes you look at the edges, you can see these attacks are generated on multiple carriers, so you'll see multiple lines coming in. So they're very coordinated attacks targeting different carriers and ISPs. Next slide. Um, so basically, what kind of countermeasures can you take along these botnets? So one is, of course, you need a product, a cybersecurity product that can help you detect and mitigate these botnet attacks. Secondly, you have to start blocking these attacks. Uh, so that's the first stage of, of how you block these is, you know, block them. Don't let the scans go through. The third thing you want to do is don't let your SPC respond to these zip botnets. You want to block them, not respond. And if you do, then the attacker will know there's a legitimate voice element here. If, they, if you don't respond, then you'll be in stealth mode as far as your network is concerned. So that's what we tell carriers to do. Next slide, please. So basically, again, what you're seeing is you need, you know, different areas of Redshift products that can be installed uh, to protect against different attacks at the peering points, number one, at the LTE points, number two, at, in the bottom from the enterprise, from residential and cable co companies, yeah, cable customers. And then, of course, you can see that live set botnets that are coming in, in the middle. That's what, you know, we tell you where the attacks are coming before they attack you. Uh, go to the next slide. So basically, just a plug um, on Redshift. Um, so we have 35 carrier customers. Um, we have um, average of 10 to 12 trials ongoing. About last year, we protected around 40 to 45 million endpoints. Um, this year, we're projecting to triple that number. And um, we put, last year, we saw about 27 million VoIP botnet attacks hitting all these carriers. Go to the next slide. So what we're going to have is, just for fun, we're going to have a little contest. And we're going to try and see if you can help us name some of these. So we want you to really participate in that, um, that we will name based on your feedback and your input. So we, we really welcome that. By, by, football, by football, you meant soccer, right? Like European football? Both. <laughs> so it could be NFL teams or, you know, the World Cup teams. Definitely. Okay. I just want to make sure we got that straight. Okay. Season, so I want to make sure we got that right. Right, right. So whatever your what what was your favorite uh, sport? <laughs> so please um, do provide your input. And and then so I just wanted to open it up for questions. 
Um, and if you have any questions, there's my email also there. And also you can contact Ray Muscatello, who's our VP for North America. Um, and also you can contact Sunil Danani, who is our VP for South America. Um, but if you have any questions there also. Awesome. Thanks, Amitabha. We uh, did have a couple of questions that people asked uh, as we were going on and as people registered for the session. Uh, the first one we have is, will my carrier network be able to isolate the SIP botnet traffic that we've been talking about today before it shuts down my service or steals valuable time or confidential user information? Yes, yeah, so if you have a product like um, Redshift inside the network, then that's what the whole purpose is, to really help you mitigate those attacks and not let it penetrate into your network. So in that way, you can actually block it um, at the ingress or egress points of the network and not having it to filter into your core network and cause more harm and damage. So it's definitely a border issue. And if you unblock at the border, you, you prevent it from getting into the cores of your network. And that's the ideal situation. Right, and that's just not a product, that's actually a service as well, right? The whole SIP threat intelligence service that sits on top of the product, right? Right, exactly, exactly. So there's, there's a product element which basically is like an appliance or a virtual environment that you can put at the edges of the network near SPCs, and there's also a threat intelligence piece which is actually blocking these botnets and providing a functionality so that you know that the, that the botnet that's or the invite that's coming in from a specific IP if it's a broad net related IP or it's some other IP, right? Great. Uh, next question is, what about a reliable way to firewall my session border controller from anomalous to traffic? We talked about, you know, shielding the SPC from responding kind of in stealth mode, like you just mentioned, but how do I kind of automate the firewalling of that SPC from the anomalous to traffic in the first place? So the thing is, um, you know, it, because um, SIP is, um, in a voice network, it's, it's a lot of SIP packets. So bigger traditional firewalls are not used in, in that environment. So you typically use an SPC. And um, since you don't have another element in front of the SPC, i.e. towards the network side, um, you typically have like a, um, a router or some other element that doesn't do security. And then there typically carriers are, depending on the SPC to do the security pieces. And so what you would do is in this particular case, if you can MIDI, if you can have a blacklist of all these bad IP address um, in real time, you can actually block them within the SPC, or sometimes you can even block it within the IMS core or other elements that um, by port number, phone number, by um, IP addresses. So it really depends on your network architecture, but you do want to mitigate it with an, a third device that can actually block it. Because again, if you're large, Carrier, it's difficult to use firewalls. If you're an enterprise, yes, you can actually mitigate it through at least mitigate the uh, you know some of the SIP rules through firewalling. But um, we are pretty unique in the, in offering a SIP threat intelligence product, so you really need a product like ours to mitigate these attacks. Right. Mm -hmm. So along those lines, next question is: How can a carrier harden their real-time SIP-based applications themselves? Right. So, um, you know, it, it's really, it's, it's, it's a multifaceted sort of answer. Um, you know, like anything else, you know, you add security to something or a core network, um, you know, you need sort of layers of defense, multiple layers of defense, right? You just can't depend on one single um, panacea, as they say. Uh, sort of companies think that encryption is, you know, sort of the end all and, and all other things, but of course it isn't because it just allows to stop man in the middle attack. So, um, what you really have to do is build an architecture um, that is pretty expansive and build an architecture that has um, you know, some defense in depth. So you may have encryption, you may have authentication, you may have some void firewalling, you may have SPCs, you may have threat intelligence, you may have um, analytics. So you have to have and build this um, sort of silos of layers and layers of defense before you get to the treasure chest, which is the IMS core or your core part of the network, right? That's what we recommend, having multiple layers of defense. Yeah, the defense in depth thing is, is pretty important. And I think a number of the customers that you've mentioned and that you've talked to and that you referred to on the slide realize that they can't just have one layer of defense. There's no one layer that's going to prevent all this anomalous traffic from getting up the different you know, attack vectors that you know, are represented in the SIP network. 
Exactly, exactly. So you do need, you know, multiple layers of defense, and that's what we advocate is, is the more um, functionality you have to protect your network, the much better it is that you can actually protect it itself. Mm. So next question is, what about carriers just blocking certain country traffic? It looks like a lot of the, the traffic is coming from specific countries. Uh, will that prevent SIP botnets, or are they going to prevent some legitimate traffic that way as well? Yeah, so that's one of the fallacies of, you know, now we live in a global environment, and customers want to be able to call anywhere, anytime, any place, right? And if you want to start blocking international calling, that's inhibiting business practice for a lot of your customers, which, you know, companies, U.S. companies do business all over the world constantly. So what you want to really be careful is not have that, you know, white list or black list of countries, but really open it up so they can call anywhere, but you want to have these mechanisms in place that can actually block when you know that it's a bad caller or it's an aggressively bad network. So that's why a product like ours, which can actually block the call um, before they start making all these bad international calls, or if they screw it, just block them right, you know, as soon as they make one or two, because you know that's not normal calling patterns. So you do need a set of a different set of devices to do that. So it looks at the analytics of anom anomalous traffic is really what you're getting at, and doing that in a proactive sense, so it's proactive stance in the network. Right, exactly, exactly. So the analytics really provides you a whole new angle of being able to do further analysis on how and what is going on in your network to be able to then you know, mitigate a lot of these attacks and thwart them and do a lot of forensics on these attacks. Right, and that's actually the last question that I had was about the analytics and the forensics. You used a lot of them today on the call. That was really, you know, very visual, and I think people think visually. I always had a mentor that taught me that when people think of pictures. So if, if you have this many analytics, how are you able to harness those? Is there some kind of unified dashboard that they can harness to make sure they're, you know, minimizing the impact of the SIP botnet threat? Yeah, exactly. So basically what happens is that um, these, these graphs and analytics are all available to our customers um, on a per node basis. And at the same time, um, in the GUI itself, the centralized management system, so we have a, a GUI which is you know, provided as part of the product, and we have a same CMS when you have multiple nodes. And that all that data is actually available. The reports are also available at those those GUIs and, and nodes. So you can actually build management reports. You can build you know sort of analysis yourself on um, the forensics based on what's in there. And you know we really encourage carriers to do tremendous amount of analytics and forensics in their own network because that's the way they can get to the bottom of the problem set, right? Because all these attacks aren't visible unless it's through analytics and, and, and painstaking analysis, which we do, can really detect these attacks, right? Awesome. Well, I didn't have any other questions from the, uh, the, the folks who registered or the folks on the call today. Are there any other points you wanted to make before closing off today's call on the topic? No, I think the, the key takeaway from here is, um, you know, botnets is a big problem, and now they're getting SIP botnets, so not only are they data-oriented, now they're SIP-oriented, and of course, phones are IoT devices, so we can have 100 you know, million or 6 billion phones attacking the network, that's not a good thing, so we really need to take care of this, look at it more proactively, and figure a way out to mitigate them, and figure out a way out to really protect your network from being shut down. Thank you very much for your time, awesome. everyone. Yeah, and we'll uh, we'll make sure we uh, put this out uh, for everybody to look at. Uh, we'll put it on archive as well, and we'll continue it on the newsletter. If you're getting the newsletter, the shout-out newsletter, if you're not getting it, please come to redshiftnetworks.com to sign up for that newsletter. And let's see if we have one last question here. Hold on. Let's see if I can get it. No. Um, thank you very much, Alexander. I uh, appreciate that. And uh, yeah, we'll have a, a session again uh, in August and we'll put it out for everybody uh, in advance. And I really thank you very much for joining. Thank you, Amitabha, for your time today. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye.